Welcome to this tutorial on exploring your local and regional air quality using both sensor and satellite data. We hope this video will give you the tools needed to access data and understand your exposure to particle matter in the air. Using both satellite data and on-ground sensor data, you can begin to answer questions of how local events affect large regions. This video is presented by RTI International and is the third and final tutorial in a three-part series on the basics of accessing and evaluating publicly available air quality data. Thank you to NASA for supporting citizen science and funding this project. Countless particles are suspended in our air at all times. Some of the particles you'll inhale from the air around you include dust from construction, stirred up material from windstorms, or emissions from fires. These particles, particularly those around 2.5 micrometers in diameter and smaller, called PM2.5, can cause health problems when their concentration in the air gets too high. In the first two videos of this series, we observed PM2.5 changes from seasonal wildfires and other types of biomass burning. In the first tutorial, you learned how to find a sensor on the purple air map, download historic data, and graph PM2.5 to start looking at trends and to find anomalies. In the second tutorial, you learned how to identify fires and smoke across the world using NASA satellites. Putting these techniques into practice, we will ask some questions of data we have found from both of these resources. On a typical day, you might check Purple Air's website for the PM levels being measured by sensors near you. An easy way to do this is by setting a shortcut to a particular map area on your phone or computer's internet browser. On a phone, go to the map area you're interested in checking frequently. Then, select your browser's icon that displays more options. This is often depicted as three dots. Then, select the option called Add to Home Screen. This should create a shortcut to that map area on your phone's home screen. On your internet browser, again, zoom to the map area of interest and then create a bookmark, which is sometimes available as a star icon to the right of your URL bar. What if you were starting to notice an unexpected increase in PM? Let's look at one scenario that occurred in India in fall 2020. Let's say you've been checking data from a sensor in northern India. For this tutorial, we'll use a sensor near Rothak, India named NASA underscore AQCS underscore 171. As we did in the first tutorial, find and select the sensor on the map. For this scenario, we'll be looking at an increase in PM2.5 that occurred back in October 2020. So, go to the download page and set the date range to October 1st through November 30th. Typically in northern India, October is a major transition month for farmers who are beginning to burn off their crop residue from the recent harvests. Knowing this, let's look at when our sensor number 171 begins to detect the burning season. To easily look at a large time period, you could select 24-hour averages. Finally, find your sensor in the list of data results and select Download Primary A. Once your data are downloaded, Open the file in your graphing software and create a line chart of column I, the atmospheric PM2.5. Looking at the chart, we see a steady increase in PM2.5 levels going into the second week of October. Can we determine where the high content of aerosol is coming from? Let's go to NASA's Worldview and see. In your browser, go to worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov and move your map so that it sits over northern India. Specifically, for our sensor, you can search for Rothak in the state of Haryana, India. On the bottom of your browser, change your date to October 1, 2020 and change the base layer to Swomi NPP Veers. First, let's look for any visible smoke over the area each day by increasing the date on the bottom bar. On October 4th, you can see faint trails of smoke across the region. By October 8th, there are bigger plumes starting to occur. Looking back at our 24-hour average data from the Purple Air sensor, the daily PM2.5 has risen from 68 micrograms per cubic meter on October 1st to over 108 micrograms per cubic meter on the 10th. Looking at some of the highest days in November, 
Let's scroll the calendar on Worldview to November 8th and add the aerosol index layer as well as the fire and thermal anomalies layer. Put your new layers at the bottom of the overlayers list so that you can still see places and borders. It indeed looks like there were a large amount of fires in the Punjab region northwest of Rothuk and the smoke was traveling across Rothuk and Delhi during that time. You could also look at aerosol optical depth to see the detected gradients of PM2.5 in the atmosphere. You can often use sensors and satellite data together to explore air quality information. If you're exploring Worldview, you may want to know whether this plume seen by the satellite is reaching the ground. Let's look at California for an example. On Worldview, search Los Angeles, California and go to September 12, 2020. Taking off all overlayers except places and borders, you can observe that through the middle of September, several plumes of smoke were in the area. Turning on the fires and thermal anomalies layer, we can see that there were many wildfires in the Los Angeles area as well as much of Northern California during that week. Let's now find a purple air sensor in that area. Go to purpleair.com and search for Los Angeles, California. Zoom into your map and select a sensor from this project, AQMD underscore NASA underscore 29. To look as far back as September 2020 from the map view, you can change the scale of the graph. In the bottom left corner, change the average from show real time to daily average and change the option from US EPA PM 2.5 AQI to raw PM 2.5 in micrograms per cubic meter of air to view measured concentrations. With your sensor selected, you will see that the graph in the top left corner is displaying daily averages going back one year. You could now observe that there was a peak in PM 2.5 for this sensor on September 12th, and the sensor registered 172 micrograms per cubic meter that day. We've shown you two scenarios in this tutorial of how to go back and forth between sensor and satellite data with your questions, but you can ask many more questions for these data. For example, when you see that one purple air sensor has been affected by smoke, you could ask, how spatially widespread is the impact from smoke? Are other sensors around it seeing the same amount? To determine this at purple air, you can click on sensors around your first sensor and the data from those sensors will be added to the graph in the top left. You could also use Worldview to track how far the smoke from these fires is traveling and in which direction. We hope this tutorial series has helped you get comfortable exploring air quality data from particle sensors and satellites. Visit our project website at aqcitizenscience.rti.org to learn more about air quality citizen science for NASA and to sign up to participate in this project. You can access all videos from this series on our YouTube channel in our tutorials playlist. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to be notified when we post future videos. Thank you for your interest and your contributions to citizen science.